What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Coker here, AKA Josh Miss Prime. You know what it is. Coming back at you with another episode of Polymathics, the channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man or, or woman. And with me today, I have the lovely, the beautiful Auto Susie, AKA Suzanne Sherwood. Sure. <laughs> and today we're going to be discussing drum roll. That's a drum roll. That is a drum Silent roll. drum roll. It's not a drum roll. Brrr. No, no, hold on. I want to do. So Disney has uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, and his sounds like a tiger. It's like a tiger drum roll. It's like. Like so I'm going to do. Things. Okay. So. Now it's too distracting. Temptation. Temptation. Yes. It's all about temptation. You know what I'm talking about. Some temptation. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh. Okay. So. So. Go ahead. What are the questions? Well, okay. So, obviously, for those of you... Well, let me set up some premise here to this conversation. For those of you that haven't caught some of our other discussion pieces, uh, Sue's is in a counseling internship and in that counseling internship why don't you explain this oh, so in the counseling internship i get the opportunity to create my own groups with the topics that i want to do and because i know so much and have because heard I so, know much so much about the hero's journey and i can see how that relates life and how it can help you build your own life um, with all that stuff, which we've talked about in many videos before, then I wanted to do groups based on that. But I don't want to do, you know how big the hero's journey is if you've heard anything that we've done. So I'm breaking it down into different sections and relating it directly to lives and right. just hitting all the points. And didn't you say there's something called like storytelling, story Oh, something? so there's narrative therapy narrative where therapy. you write your story in a way that's empowering for you. So people have a hard time with this because they're like, well, where do I even start writing my story, right? You're like, today I was born on a cold winter night in 19... Like, no. We're going to help you hit those points and everything like that. Like, focus your story and make it a story that serves you and while we're on that topic aside from people who are going through issues with drugs and alcohol just for you yourself I think this is a good exercise as a person you know considering this channel is polymathics and reaching your full potential this is a really good exercise for someone to examine their own neurosis in a sense and and kind of see what things in their own minds or life are kind of triggering uh individuals events things like that and then from a writer's point of view of course there's going to be tactics and strategies Susan and i own a publishing company and we publish a lot of fiction books so this is this is near and dear to our business parts as well and I'll just say that I think that part of a writer's psychological arsenal if you will that keeps them sane is writing it allows them to sort of role play all the different personalities that are in their mind right. so, so I mean I do intern at a substance abuse treatment center but this really applies to um, just anyone like from a mental health standpoint from an addiction standpoint just from like an improving your life standpoint and to kind of get you to guide you to digging deep into your subconscious and figuring out why you do the things that you do yeah and I can also see some other applications. This might be a reach, but I, my mind thinks about like, what are all the different ways that this could be used? If you're a parent, having your kid write about their favorite character or write their own little story or scene 
can sometimes give you great insight into things that they're dealing with and or just like you know it allows you to see like what's important to them what they're focusing on and that alone is is sometimes if you can't get them to talk to you directly that's a good way to still see what's on their mind and then from like a strictly kind of fun even like a dating type of scenario if you're on say probably not a first date or a second date but if you're on like you've been dating someone for a long time and you're looking for something interesting to do these are some things that you could that you could sit down and, and talk about you'd be like okay so here's what temptation is in a, in a fictional sense like what are some of the temptations that you've had or that that leads to a deeper conversation which leads to a deeper connection which leads to a stronger relationship which leads to fun things temptation <laughs> to temptation so, so okay the groundwork has been laid firmly firmly so let's get into it is there a question that you would like to ask, or do you want me to just jump in? Um, are there general temptations that you see in most stories? Yes. Oh, and? No, okay, I'll save that follow-up question. Go okay, ahead. yeah, so general temptations that are in stories. Just really quick, there can be temptation throughout an entire story. So I'm, now I'm strictly talking about fiction, right? Uh, because we as human beings in real life face temptation all the time, right? Whether it's ice cream or, you know, someone that we find attractive. I feel attacked. <laughs> or ice cream. <laughs> or chips. That's Now you're really being attacked. Uh, there are a lot of things that come up in everyday life that tempt us. But when we talk about temptation in terms of the hero's journey, the meta-myth, the monomyth, the fool's journey... What we're, at, what we're really talking about is a stage in the journey where the hero faces what would be considered the great temptation. And there's a couple pieces to this, depending on the size and the scope of your story. One is, uh, the smaller the story, the less focus you'll have on this. But the temptation usually happens from what I've seen after the meeting with the goddess, but I, sometimes it can happen, start before. In my opinion, it really happens after the meeting with the goddess and that divine figure has given the impossible task. Now, now the hero is going into their descent into darkness, approaching the innermost cave. During that initial portion, it's my belief that that's when they're gonna face this, this really powerful temptation. And depending on the size of the story, it might just be your hero, it might be your hero and their team, and in some very interesting stories, I've even seen it where it's the shadow figure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a combination of all of these, like including the mentor. So don't limit yourself to the hero. The hero is one of the more important ones but sometimes you can use another character to uh, to portray this temptation. And it still comes across as the team is being, or someone is being tempted. Mm -hmm. And so, the now to answer specifically Susie's question, which is a really great question, what, what are some of the general examples of temptation a lot of people relate the word or the term temptation correlated with sex a woman a woman oh, and, that's and my follow-up so and, and and actually this is this is particularly particularly an issue with the hero's journey and the terminology that's used because uh, you have meeting with the goddess and then directly after that is woman as temptress. That's the old terminology that was used. And the reason 
why it's that way is because in a lot of old mythologies that were that had a male hero at the center the woman a woman would be the temptress would be the temptation particularly in like a Arthurian legend or like a knight's legend something like Dante's Inferno you have the hero who's this very altruistic knight who's taken vows of celibacy for their mission for their for their not it's not a quest what they used to call them crusade for their crusade and then along comes this woman who they love or the ghost or the spirit of the woman who they love this is actually in god of war there's a scene that this happens actually in a couple of them and that's that's where that confusion kind of comes in and i've done a whole video about the difference between the the goddess and the temptress but to be clear, while sexual temptation can be a temptation, it is not the only temptation. It's not the it's not the the main point of this stage. This stage is actually much further reaching. It's what is so tempting to the hero that it would lure them away from their mission, particularly the impossible task that the god the divine figure just gave the goddess so if you think about it in that light it can take form in many different ways it can be sexual temptation it can be greed it can be fear i'm afraid to go on i'm so afraid think of the lion from wizard of oz. the wizard of oz as soon as the wizard tells them they have to get the broomstick and they and they set out on that mission the cowardly lion is as cowardly as he gets and that's his temptation that he has to overcome and act, so to that point I don't want to go into too many examples because we usually save those for the end mm -hmm. but if you look at that story each of the three supporting characters the scarecrow the tin man and the lion in their own way have to overcome their weakness in order to find Dorothy mm -hmm. and, and go into the, uh, the the witch's fortress or castle. That is them overcoming their temptation. Sometimes it's an illusion. Like when you see Bilbo and the dwarves go into the not haunted forest but it's like the Mirkwood forest it's this darker forest where evil is starting to take foothold in it and there's there's these spiders there's like like it's under a spell and they get lost and that's another thing that will happen like during this temptation the heroes a lot of times will be in some sort of labyrinth or a maze where they're being they're being confused. They're getting lost. They can't find their way. And they're Anya, arguing. If they stay on the path, they're fine, but they'll get confused if they go. Or they the won't path. follow the directions. Like maybe the direction is don't take a left turn. And then someone takes a left turn. And as soon as they do that, they've given into that temptation. Or don't fight amongst each other. And then they do. That's another temptation, which is you know, brooding against each other. And then a lot of times you'll see this, this is a step within the stage, which is called dismemberment. And sometimes it's a physical dismemberment where like C-3PO gets blown up into several pieces. Sometimes it's, or, or like the, the scarecrow gets torn apart by the, the monkeys, the flying monkeys in Wizard of Oz. That is symbolic of there's a couple symbolic things going on in a story. I know we're talking about fiction right now, but we're going to bring it back into real life, which is um, that maze, that confusion, that labyrinth represents the subconscious. During this descent into darkness that the hero takes to approach their innermost cave, approach the dragon, face their inner demons, they must enter the subconscious because that 
is where the answers lie. That is where the, the, the psychological truth that's gonna help them overcome their fatal flaw, that's where they're gonna find it. And so it's confusing at first because when you go into the subconscious, it's, a, it's chaos is what it is. It's complete chaos. And it's chaos not because it's, it has no meaning, it's because its meaning is so great and so profound that your mind, your, your conscious mind, your ego, is not capable of fathoming it. That's what it is. So, the temptation, as I was saying, can take form in several different ways. It could be your boss says, hey, you know what? We're, because you did so good on the previous tasks in, in the journey, we're gonna promote you there's no longer a, a need for you to go on that mission. Or uh, <clears throat> you win the lottery. There's no reason for you to now undertake your life's passion because you have all this money that you can go and spend and have fun with. That is, that is the temptation. So ultimately, it's something that's going to distract the hero or his team, or even the, the shadow or the villain, from their main mission. Okay, so I have some comments, and you tell me if I'm on the right track. Okay. It seems like Get your face in, in here. most in most of the ooh, in most of the stories that have this that's really clear, it's at the point where the hero and his friends are so exhausted. From the journey that the most tempting thing is to go home it's like to abandon the journey that's it. the temptation is like and i think that part b is i think that that is the why the woman is temptress because um and this is this is a little woo woo but um because women like because you come from the womb and the womb is only present in a woman <coughs> Joseph Campbell may have touched on that to an extent, but the, not only does she represent nature, but she's also a nurturer, right? The first nurturer that anybody encounters 99% of the time is their biological mother or someone who has taken on the mother role. And so that comfort of not having to feel pain is very, it's very alluring to and, and uh, honestly, all of those other temptations are really just a, like a more, I don't want to say a more advanced, but a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a different spin or twist on that, that nurturing, that comfort level of, oh, I don't have to go and challenge myself. Yeah, you can I can rest. Right. And again, if you think about it in terms of real life, right, for someone to overcome a psychological flaw that they have they have they literally do have to have an inner journey into the subconscious and find out what what is in there that they can use to get them out of this rut and the mind and the body will reel against that right. yeah our, there's something um, really powerful about knowing biologically how you work like your body is made to facilitate the easiest way to do things right like survival mode and survival is a little chaotic it's simple but full of chaos so you're always going to revert back to that so when you're ready to change and do things your body is going to be your body is wired to just continue on with the simplest, easiest things. And change is not simple and not easy. Right. You need the most, your body craves like the simple, easy, 
front running, get a reward right away. It's made to do that to survive. But if you consider long-term benefits, it's not, it's just not functionality-wise made to logically or to um, to prefer long-term over short-term benefits. It's not. Because you might not live to get the long-term benefit. So why? Right. And just think about like a real-life example. Uh, we gave this in one of the earlier videos that we were doing on, on fatally flawed characters or uh, tragic characters. If someone who's overweight has a heart attack and then they go see the doctor which would be considered the, the divine being and they say you have to stop eating bullshit and you have to actually work out once in a while that's the impossible task and, and, and maybe they give they say you have to lose 40 pounds in the next I don't know six months or else there's a good chance you're going to have another heart attack that's the impossible task. And so in the moment, the hero out of fear and obligation and the pain that they had from being in the hospital, maybe they're like, yes, I'm gonna take on this task, I'm gonna do it. But then they go out into that journey and maybe they take the first steps. They like, you know, they look up what foods they shouldn't eat and what exercises they should do. That's kind of easy, right? But then what's gonna happen? They go to the gym for the first time. Or they eat broccoli for the first time. And they're like, this fucking sucks. And then, and then, uh, I'm just gonna use a, a fun example. Their wife comes over with some ice cream. And they're like, hey, Netflix and chill. There you go. That's, that is real life temptation. Uh, in the example of drugs or alcohol, just imagine someone comes close to ODing, maybe they OD'd, maybe they got a DUI, and they get sent to a recovery facility. Rather than jail. Rather than jail, <laughs> because they ha they've they been identified to have a problem, and the counselors tell them, you're going to have to stop drinking or doing drugs and, and get off of all of it uh, for the next 60 days or something, while you're in the facility. Okay, that's not too hard because people are there. That's like that's like the beginner phase, right? right. You but, have to go out of your way to do it because they're like right. searching your stuff all the time. There's some crazy, say, you can't even visit the other population of opposite gender. You're, there's some craziness. And, and actually, so even in that though, it's like there will be temptation. If your issue is with the opposite gender, there will be other people of the opposite gender hanging around. And in a facility like that in particular, where you're not allowed to do so many things, it's really hard to ignore physical desires, we'll right. say. So the, the end part, oh, I'm sorry, continue. No, uh, I mean, uh, that, that wasn't the end, so but. If you do give in to temptation, this is the, the drugs and alcohol type. Like I know we hear about relapsing all the time, but the danger of relapsing is that once you've been sober for a certain amount of time, if you go back into it and you're trying to hit what you did before, you're like the chances of overdosing are just crazy. And if no one's around with Narcan, if you've decided to isolate because that's your favorite thing to do, you're done for. Right. You're, like losing people left and right. It's so bad that there's a an opioid crisis and that's that's like a whole separate that's one small piece of the drug and addiction problem that is happening yeah and then you know so we just did we did a couple like i would call them extreme examples not everybody that's watching the channel is dealing with drugs or, right. or alcohol well, or is it having having heart attacks or is a writer right so from a from a like you know i'm just your average person and I don't have any anything that's gonna like necessarily put me in the grave tomorrow type of flaw. But I know that I'm not reaching. Let's take someone who wants to be an athlete, and you have self-identified, or someone else, maybe your coach, has said, "Hey, if if you don't 
practice this every day for the next three months, and, or if you don't make this time on the 100 yard dash, uh, there's no way that you can qualify for the meet. Well, then that's that's like a that's a that's a scenario. What I'm saying is, it's not always like you've got some terrible thing like alcohol that's holding you back. It might just be like, okay, I'm already doing good stuff, but how do I get to the next level? How do I how do I get from doing a 5K to a 10K? That's a personal thing that we're working on right now. And it's, it's not necessarily like uh, you're doing anything bad. It's the contrary. You're doing good stuff, but you want to do more good stuff. And so it's, you got to identify what is that impossible task that you have to do. It might be like, you got to add an extra five miles to every week that you're running or start some new program, but then the temptation is still going to come in. The temptation is, I don't want to wake up this morning and run, or it's raining outside, or man, that cheesecake looks really good right now. Right. You know, and all those always things. always when you're tired and you're right. so far along in the journey that the temptation is so clear and vivid, um, There's uh, and it's when you need to do it the most. <laughs> There's a guy, I kind of forget his name. We, about a year ago, we were studying him pretty hard, hardcore. He, his big shtick is positive psychology. Oh, and Martin Seligman. Yeah, Martin Seligman. And one of his big things that I loved actually was, don't practice for your best day. Practice for your worst day. Like you need to, you need to go in expecting that like, shit is going to be the worst it's ever been and you're still going to get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that that applies to so many different industries and topics and fields when it comes to business and sales and trying to pitch, when it comes to going to the gym and you're not feeling 100%, when it comes to dating and you're, you're just not feeling the top of your game but you meet someone that's interesting you cannot allow that bottom feeling to stop you from doing what you know is morally right for you and the other person right. for your life for your kids for your family for for your hopes and your dreams mm -hmm. for your potential She hasn't eaten it in, in several hours. I'm not so bad. She hasn't so, eaten it in a while. Fasting is something we've been trying to, well, not trying, we've been doing it for a while. Um, intermittent fasting. And there are days that I want to eat, and I want to eat late at night. And I can turn the around. feeling the next day is, I've had to have that consequence so many times before I understood that. Hunger is an indication. It's not a. It's not a threat. It's not how you are. It's not. Right. A but now, now we're diverting. Sorry. I know you're hungry. I'm hungry. I can okay, turn around. So we're back. Yeah. So okay. So I think you guys understand now, like the lo like the the stage of temptation in terms of a story, but also real life. Yeah. Some of like the the key indicators and, but but now. Are, like, what are, are there any other questions that you had that pertain to this? Those, that was the big one, like, what temptation looks like in a story. Where, and where it is, because I've, I was, I've seen it kind of in the road of trials, but I didn't know if it was, if 
like that's just road of trials that's not really temptation and then um, if it is common for it to come right before like the abyss like right up and into the abyss so I think a really key thing and I've never considered it this this way but a key thing is if you know what your impossible task is, right? Maybe for you, you decided you're gonna lose 40 pounds or you're gonna run a faster mile or you're gonna uh, apply to that school or get certain grades. It's gonna be different for everybody. But if you know what it is and you've taken multiple attempts, there's a good chance that you're succumbing to temptation and that's why you haven't achieved it. It, that is a good indicator that something is is pulling you away from whatever you're supposed to be doing and that's why it's not getting done so then that's that's like when you would sit down and analyze what is preventing me from doing this because I set I set out on this goal and and it, it's either a temptation or it's a tactic that's really what it boils down to if it's a temptation you should be able to identify it. It's like, uh, I need to lose 40 pounds, but I haven't actually worked out. Or I only go and work out a couple days and then I get distracted and then I don't work out for a week. If that's the case, you just identify like you, consistency. You need to figure out a way to be consistent. But if it's like, <clears throat> uh, I, I wanted to write a book, but I haven't been able to like I haven't no, no I wanted to write a book I'm trying to think of a tactic one wanted to write a book there's an accident here so give me a second be distracted but I have this actually happened to me NaNoWriMo back in like 2015 or 2016 in order to succeed you write 50,000 words did that in a month no problem. But when I went back to look at the book, at the story, it was a disaster. It was like a mishmash of shit. And it's like, it was too hard to pull together because I hadn't really thought it through. And so that was a tactical issue where I had to go back and say, okay, the next time I write a story, I know that I have to plot it out first and have a beginning and end. That's actually one of the main things that got me into the hero's journey, the meta myth, all that stuff was identifying that flaw that I had. And since then, I've been able to complete stories now because I know that that's something I have to do for me. You'll identify those things for you. And then uh, a lot of times in stories at least, the, the, the key to overcoming temptation is that you have to one block it out but it's really more about focusing on the goal not letting anything come between you and the goal and it's going to be hard because the temptation is going to be something that's so like Susie was saying so comfortable it feels like home. It feels like a warm blanket wrapped around you on a cold day, sitting by a fire with hot chocolate in your in your <laughs> hand. And when really you need to be out there fighting against the wolves that are beating down at your door right. in a metaphorical sense. So this is the hard part for me too. And this is hard for me to go into a group about though too because there is a time for rest. Negative habits are way easier to create than positive ones because just like the universe and nature in, in, in itself, it, it's constantly in this state of 
chaos, disarray, and degeneration, death, basically. And so if you're not proactively pursuing something, then you will, you will fall into the current, essentially. then you're moving backward and some people are like well if I don't change I stay the same but that's not true either if you don't change at all you're moving backward because your body is decaying right like your environment is moving forward it's constantly moving forward if you're staying in the same place then now you're behind you're back and from where you were before. another thing that people don't consider is the world around you is changing whether you want to or not yeah. and so even if you don't change it is changing and eventually you'll be forced to change and right. a lot of times those changes are the ones that you don't want like they're the worst right. so uh, another thing I wanted to mention going back to like uh, you know if you haven't achieved the goal maybe you've fallen into temptation is that in stories a lot of times the hero does fall into temptation or one of the other characters do, falls in and has to have a lifeline or something so the point with that is if you identify that you have been, that's not, it's not permanent. It's, not permanent. It, it's like what we said with tragic characters. Just because you are a tragic character in real life, that doesn't always lead to death, right? It might lead to a, a poor circumstances or a poor situation. Right. I mean, the, but it you can, can be changed. changed to a redemptive arc. Right. You can. Yeah. That's where the redemptive, and in a sense. The, the temptation phase, even if you give in for a moment, is like a mini, it's a mini redemption in the story. Because you gotta think, most stories are about heroes who do succeed. And so that temptation phase, especially if they give into it, that is them kinda, it's go, them going through a minor, tragic and redempt, redemptive arc. So, Which is relatable because that's how life works. There is no good guy, bad guy. Now There's the, no good or bad. The other, the I don't want to say the final thing. Suze might have some other items, but the final thing that I think is important to bring to this conversation is temptation is the first step on on this journey, and. Joseph Campbell used to say that there were four stages to enlightenment. And um, he didn't break his stages out the way that I do, but essentially temptation is one of those. It leads into the enlightenment stages. You cannot reach enlightenment until you have overcome the temptation. You have to prove it. Yeah, you have to prove that, that you, the old you is, is gone and won't give in to those things in order for there to be room for the new you. And that's that's the first step. And then, you know, you, you go into a descent, you have to face your inner demons, your inner monster, then there's gonna be an atonement, and then an apotheosis moment. But those are all very critical to maturation and, and growth. So you shouldn't see the temptations as, so we're putting a lot of meaning in them, but their meaning is not that it's time to give up. Their meaning is that it's, you're almost there. Right. You're on, you're, you're on the you're path. You're on the right track. You're on the path to growth. You just got to lean into it rather than sit back. Right. You have to see the temptations as opportunities. And even if you give in, you have to stop giving in so that you can be tempted again again and again right okay so we're good yep without any burgers without any bur we're gonna go get some burgers so i don't get in trouble <laughs> okay ladies and gentlemen we're gonna cut this one short this has been josh miss prime aka josh coker and auto susie aka suzanne Sherman. coming at you from polymathics the channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man or woman and until next time Take it easy.